How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be making checkpoints. It's something that was requested in the last Let's Play to Learn video where we kind of went over this linear platformer game that had some flaws. And it was also requested in the live stream where we made this template linear platformer, uh, which I'm really excited about because I think there's a lot of things that get lost in translation with linear platformers. Uh, when you see people making their very first game, it's usually a platformer that they've handcrafted the level on. Uh, and I think for us to just kind of break everything down and take everything, uh, make it simple really, versus doing something that's more randomly generated because we're not quite there yet, is going to be really good for future videos because we can actually just show uh, some of the things that make a linear platformer fun because this is the most classic type of game you can possibly have. Okay. Enough talking, basically what I've done here is I've just implemented a way uh, to just kind of navigate with these template animations and a camera object and you can see here that we have this little uh, floating square which is from the last Let's Play to Learn video where uh, we had those birds, we can jump on their head and this is actually pretty good gameplay mechanic because the gap is too large for me to jump on my own. My jump strength won't let me get that far so actually having this in here, uh, of course I fell, uh, is actually a good thing because now I can actually, it promotes gameplay, it promotes me to actually try to jump on uh, that enemy's head which is good. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be adding in our checkpoints which is something that's been requested before. We're going to actually overlap this object here and we're going to have that indicate to us that we've saved our game and that we can come back to this point if we die, if we fall into the ocean or if we collide with a fireball or anything like that. Then if we have other checkpoints further down, we want to make sure that we are actually going to uh, load our game back in that new position rather than the old position. So it's actually very easy to do because Construct 2 makes things so simple, which is really, really awesome of them because otherwise this would take a lot of working around to make sure that it saves. Uh, and there's a whole lot of things that you should read about on saving your game. So I'm going to put a link in the description below uh, because it, rather than me just kind of spewing off the information uh, verbatim, I think it'd be better if you read it yourself. Uh, I'm going to explain a few things that you should look out for. But other than that, uh, definitely check that out just to kind of make sure that you're aware of what can be saved and what can't be saved. Okay, so we need to check to see if we're overlapping that checkpoint object. So if our player is overlapping another object, object checkpoint, then what we want to do is we want to trigger once and we want to save our game. So we're going to go system, save, game, just like this. All I did was type in save and it pops it up as its own action. And actually it's going to save it to its own slot just by default. It's called my save. This is where Construct 2 becomes even more powerful because if we change this to my save one, now we have another save slot. So just like that, you can have multiple save slots in your game, which is something that's also very common in linear platformers. Definitely don't have more than three or five. I think that'd be ridiculous anyway. You don't want to have too many save slots because these are permanent save slots to your browser, to whatever you're using. So make sure that you don't overload how many save slots you have, but it's cool to have at least three, I think. Okay, so if we're saving our game to save slot my save, then let's set the animation frame to one of our checkpoints. So that way we can actually, uh, oh, I didn't even go over that, did I? Uh, then we can actually s indicate to ourselves that we're saving our game, indicate to the user that we've actually overlapped this sign and the game has been successfully saved. So you can see here that I have this really poorly drawn sign. I know it's bad. Feel free to put in your own uh, cool flag animation if you want to have separate animations for this or um, anything that would be better than this. Uh, all I did was I have this default animation here that has a speed of zero so these frames don't loop each other. Basically this is our default frame and if we overlap it we're setting it to this which just indicates to me that I've actually saved my game successfully and that this is an actual checkpoint that we've hit. So by setting the animation frame to one we've now done so. Uh, now we just need a way to load our game because now we've actually saved our game but we have no way to load it. Now these are our death animations I guess. This is where our player would generally die uh, or something like that. So eventually we will be needing to load our game from here. I'm going to just do a shortcut and immediately load our game from here. Uh, there's other things we want to add in uh, but we'll get to that in future videos. What I want to do though is I want to make this reusable so I'm going to put this into a function. I'm going to call this the load game function and all it's going to do is add the action to our system, type in load 
And right here, now we can load the full state of the game from the slot my save, which is really cool because if I put, you know, if this was my save one, it's not going to load from over here because we don't have anything saved to my save one. We only have something saved to my save, which is really, really cool. You can call this whatever you like. So we're going to load from uh, my save. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this function when we overlap our water. So let's call load game function. And even what you could do is you could probably make this a little bit more intuitive. You could call function dot param zero, right? Uh, you can load from function dot param zero, which would be my save just like this. And that's how you can actually load from multiple save slots, which could be cool. So we're going to call load game function, which is going to load from my save. Uh, and we already have a way to save our game. So now we're actually halfway there. What I want to do though, is I want to make sure that we have multiple save slots. So let's control click this. Uh, actually, you know, before we control click this, let's add an instance variable. Uh, let's call this, uh, let's call this instance checked. Let's make this a Boolean. And that way we don't go back and actually resave at a, a previous location because that never happens in games. So let's just copy and paste this twice by holding down control. And these are our checkpoints. So now when I hit these, I expect when I die to respawn there. So to make sure that this is going to work this way, I need to add in another condition by hitting, uh, no, not a hitting C on the keyboard here under this condition. And I want to say system for each object checkpoint. So for each checkpoint, if it's overlapping, then trigger this once. We'll get into doing the Boolean in a second. I just want to show you uh, all of this working from the get go. Let's hit play. So let's actually overlap this. You can see here that I've now actually completed the save. The game has saved. Now, if I die, it'll actually push me back to this position. So let's go over here. And now I've actually I've called this save. So let's actually die again. And now I'm actually saving or I'm loading from this position. Let's go over here and you can see that it's going to work both ways. Now, because I haven't done the checked Boolean yet, if I go over here and I overlap this position again, I'm actually going to load back at this position. Same thing with over here. If I overlap it, I'm going to load back at this position, which is not something that I really want. Uh, it's not really common in games to do, and it's very easy to add. Uh, when we're triggering this once, let's add in another condition by hitting C on the keyboard and check our object uh, checkpoint to see if our Boolean is not set. To make sure if it's not set, hit OK and then hit I to invert it. Uh, so now we're only going to trigger this once if it's not already checked. So we're only going to set it to true once. Uh, and now this should work perfectly fine. Did I set it to true? No, I didn't set it to true. Uh, let's actually set that to true here. So if it's not checked, now we can actually set it to true. So now this will only work once. All right, so let's hit play. And when we restart our game, you can see that our save is not loaded, which is what we want. So now here we go. There's our save. And there we go. Uh, that will not be the case, though. You can actually still load your game from the start of the layout. It's just the way I was doing it. Uh, here we go. And now if I go over here and I try to save, uh, it won't let me do it because we now have our checked Boolean working. Cool. So if I overlap over here and I die, then I'm still going to go back to where my checkpoint was. So that's how easy it is to do checkpoints. Uh, it's a really, really, really simple way. And I really liked implementing it because it's so simple. But what I want to show you now is just one other thing. And again, please do read the Skira page on how to properly, uh, just things to look out for when you're saving your game. One thing that you want to look out for is scenery objects, things that don't need to be saved. The things that need to be saved are your player and your enemies in the state of the game. Uh, the background, the, the art assets, they don't. So for the tile map, you'll see here that I added the behavior called no save. This does not affect your performance of the game whatsoever. It only, uh, it only helps keep the save game file size down. So it's very important that for things like the water, for things like the background that you add the no save behavior, which again, doesn't do anything other than keep the save file size down. So that is it. That is exactly how you can add in checkpoints to your game. You can get a little bit more intuitive with it once you start to add in more slots. But for the most part, this is the basics of it. And we'll probably do a little bit more of this, but it's not going to stray from the code we just added. It's very, very simple to do. So I'm really happy that I got to show it to you. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I really do appreciate it. Also like this video if you want to see more and comment below if you have any questions. Also in the description, there's a new Facebook group that I created for this channel. So make sure you join that if you haven't already and post your own stuff and comment on things and all the above. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.